I don't know if you've ever heard this, bro. But you know how you've, you'll you say, I don't care for things that happened in the past or things that caused you pain? We all have. What, I'm, what I've learned, it's not that we didn't care or we don't care. We're basically saying we can't care. Because when we cared, we only got hurt. When we cared, we only cried, but nothing changed. When we cared, we had to sit with and feel emotions that we don't want to feel. And so what I'm learning is, it's not that you don't care. It's, it's just what it is. What, what has caring ever done for me? I don't want to sit in these emotions anymore. But here's the thing, when you're getting ready to really heal, when you're really on the journey to wholeness, you have to revisit some things. If you're any any if you're any in you're in any real counseling, you're gonna have to go back into to the past and address some things. What I'm seeing is I see it all the time happen. People are afraid to revisit their past. Because revisiting their past means they're gonna have to feel things again. They're gonna have to dig up some things again. And they don't want to feel that. They work too hard to get to this place that they're in now where they're stronger. They feel more confident. They feel bolder now. They, they've created this new them that has helped them suppress the old them, the pain of the past, the wounds of the rejection, the wounds of the betrayal. They've had to become because the brain is trained to keep you alive. So I understand why you have to wipe your tears and keep going. I get it. Here's encouragement. When you're revisiting your past from this new you, you have to remember you're older now. You're wiser now. You're way more experienced. You have more wisdom. You have more understanding of life. You have a way different perspective. And so when you revisit what may happen in your past, you're looking at it from a different lens. So when you were 10 or when you were young, of course that situation would be so emotional that you want to give up. But now that you have some experience under your belt, at this age, you're looking at it from that lens. And so when you revisit, just know that you're revisiting from a whole different perspective. You're going to be able to handle it. You're going to be able to sit with it. And of course I would tell you to sit with it with wise counsel. And try to accomplish it on your own because this stuff gets emotional, but it's so much it's it's encouragement to know that you're looking back not as the little boy or the little girl. You're looking back as the new you, the older you, the more experienced you, the wiser you. And that's the only way you can really heal. Becoming who you're called to be has very little with the future. It has everything to do with returning to who you were when you were young. Before the pain, who were you? See? Before the betrayal, before the rejection, before the wounds. See? Before they said what they said. Before they told you that you were this and you were that. These negative words that cripple us, that have made us or shaped our identity. It's who you were before that. See? And it's when you become the kid again. You really get the essence of who God has called you to be. And so I, I'm telling you, I'm excited because I see a generation starting to heal again. I see a generation pursuing healing again. And I think the challenge for us, the church, the body of Christ, or for those who follow Christ, is that we really point people to the true healer because you can do all this addressing but what really brings the healing is the truth. You need the truth about God. And I think as we heal, hmm, thank you, Holy Ghost. God just gave me a vision. As we heal, we're going to really build up another beautiful generation after us. I have a friend, she has a brand. She has a shirt that says, 
Let us heal from our wounds so our children don't have to. It's profound. It's profound. Let us heal. Let's revisit the past from here, from this place. 